Military breeds innovation, and what starts as a race to create technologies to gain edge on the battlefield oftentimes end up making healthcare better. As we enter a new era of biologically enhanced soldiers, let's see what technologies might trickle down into our lives next. This is Dr. Bertalan Meshko, and you're watching The Medical Futurist. In 1990, GPS was a system set up by the US Department of Defense only to be made available to civilian users by Bill Clinton six years later. Computers, microwaves, duct tape, and many more things we use all the time were originally invented by and for military use. But other than stopping the enemy, the obvious main focus of military inventions is to keep soldiers alive. And that goal trusted the development of many life-saving technologies over the years, with most of them then becoming civilian applications as well. Ultrasound, for example, was first used by engineers to find flaws in the metal hulls of tanks and naval vessels. EpiPen dates back to Cold War-era auto-injectors filled with antidotes to nerve agents such as serine gas. The idea of an ambulance comes from a surgeon in Napoleon's army who figured that horse-drawn carriages could take wounded soldiers away from the battlefield to receive medical care. And even plastic surgery was invented to restore wounded soldiers' faces to what they looked like before their injuries. So, wherever the individual's health is crucial, like in the military or in space missions, there will be billions in funding to not just innovate, but to think outside the box too. And that's a very important distinction between how the regular players in healthcare and how government-funded agencies like the infamous DARPA innovate. Now, one of the next big ideas that governments and militaries around the world are focusing on is the possibility of creating a super soldier. It has been reported recently that China is trying to leverage their research in gene editing and nanotechnology to gain advantage in the battlefield. In response to that, France has announced that they started research on creating what they call enhanced soldiers. They specifically emphasize that they are doing it to keep up with the rest of the world. And as you can imagine, the US is way ahead of the curve. A 2002 DARPA 5 proclaimed, the human being is becoming the weakest link in defense systems. So in the past two decades, they started to focus on how to create advanced soldiers. And they are spending hundreds of millions of dollars to achieve that. But what would realistically define a super soldier and what could we adapt from them in healthcare? We can basically talk about technology that enhances soldiers without impacting their bodies and technologies that enhance them biologically. Or to put it simply, we are trying to create Iron Man's armor and Captain America's Super Soldier Serum at the same time. Let's start with the former. Exoskeleton is a well-described technology with a myriad of possible applications. These augmentations can aid natural movement or can support us to lift and carry huge weights without breaking a sweat. More advanced types can have all sorts of augmentations that can help a soldier in the battlefield. Imagine running a marathon with an exoskeleton-based leg enhancement without getting tired. But as we've seen in other examples, these things trickle down to civilian use. Recently, a paralyzed Frenchman has been able to move again with a brain-controlled exoskeleton. As the technology will evolve, I expect to see more of this not just on battlefields, but on our streets, as one day these might replace wheelchairs. If you're wondering how can a paralyzed person move an exoskeleton, it is with brain-computer interfaces. And as you can imagine, DARPA is thinking about more than one way to use them. Brain-computer interfaces, working with drones operating at the speed of thought rather than through mechanical devices, is another reason why they really want to harvest that technology. Just think about it. A soldier in the battlefield controlling air support themselves? If that's not an edge over the enemy, I don't know what is. Even though Elon Musk's Neuralink is working on being able to implant a microchip into the central nervous system, aka the brain, being in the battlefield and controlling technologies from afar might be a bit too much for our cognitive capacity. But what's more than possible is for soldiers to have an augmented reality system that turns battlefields into video games. DARPA already has a program that puts critical information over a soldier's field of vision 
and with that they can geotech enemies in 3D or receive video feeds from surveillance platforms. Now, let's turn inward. One of the main objectives in creating any sort of advanced soldiers has always been to enhance their natural performance with reducing their sleeping needs to as little as possible. In the German army, back in World War II, the answer to this was simply amphetamine. Today, they use stimulant drugs like modafinil that's already in use in the US army. It temporarily enhances cognitive capabilities while bringing concentration and attention to a high level. After all, there is something frightening about a soldier with laser-sharp focus and no need to sleep. But what started as a branch of super soldier programs ended up as treatment for some of the symptoms of narcolepsy as well. Even if you can focus for days without sleeping, you will still experience pain. That's why DARPA calls soldiers the weakest link. So naturally, one of DARPA's programs dealt with a soldier's ability to ignore physical pain and injury. The drug they created hijacked the pain response in the nervous system. It's a moral twilight zone to hide the effects of an injury instead of treating them, but a soldier that can shrug off a bullet wound is in a clear advantage. But militaries aren't just focusing on pain, they want soldiers who heal fast too. DARPA is working on various ways to monitor the body's physiological processes and then stimulate them to speed up the healing. And with that, we sort of touched upon science fiction. So let's see how far-fetched it can be. The US government is thinking about deploying an array of nanostructures into soldiers' bloodstream that would act as tiny oxygen tanks. These microscopic machines would be able to perform the function of red blood cells, but at a level thousands of times greater than what is natural. A soldier equipped with these would be able to move continuously without ever running out of breath and dive underwater without having to surface for air for a long time. But where it really gets crazy is when it comes to genetic editing. The first genetically edited children were born in China. Some of their genes were engineered to make them resistant to HIV. And now Russia seems to be continuing where China left off. Apparently, the Russian High Command had a meeting recently debating about the creation of genetically modified babies. These kids could be born with better stamina, bigger muscle strength, faster healing processes, with inherited immunity against an array of diseases. They could be the true ultimate soldiers. But as a geneticist, I'm afraid I must be the one telling them the bad news. The human genome doesn't work that way and it's impossible to find out what these genetic modifications can lead to. But while these might all sound exciting, let's hope that the future is not going to be defined by battlefields filled with enhanced soldiers, but by the healthcare innovations these military projects will eventually bring to all our lives. So how hopeful are you about this? Please leave a comment and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you and cheers.